All right, let's go. Wisconsin sunrise man it is sure is pretty out here so we're headed out uh, day two we're gonna be using the tree mech for this first job so that's a knuckle boom crane I'll show you this bad boy I'm taking this bad boy for our first job so Rion's got more trucks than guys you remember the Merlot? That's our second job. And he drove that this morning at the butt crack of dawn. And then Felipe picked him up this morning on his way to work. And now we're taking this, this guy. I'm really excited. I've never worked with one of these before. I've only worked with these in my dreams. And now my dreams are coming true. So let's get going. I'll show you what this guy's all about. All right, here we are, day two. What are we doing here, Rion? Well, let's go take a look. We are going to be cutting down another dead ash tree. Um, this one's got some obstacles here. We've got the deck, the power line running to the house. Um, these little trees here, the play structure. So I think it's a good idea to use a crane on this one. <laughs> This thing's all sprawled out. Yeah. And uh, before we can cut this one down, I was going to trim a few branches off this birch tree so I had room to swing the boom. And uh, once I suggested that I could cut some of these branches off, the homeowner said, well, why don't you just cut the whole tree down? So before we can cut this down, we have to cut the birch down. So that's how we're going to start the day. All right. So originally, I would just pull the crane as close as I can to the house so I can get as much reach as possible. But because we're cutting the birch tree down first, we're actually gonna have to set the crane up a little bit further back, cut the birch tree down. And then once the birch tree's gone, we have to move the crane a little bit closer. How come we can't just pull right up to the house and cut the birch tree down with one setup? Um, Cause then I'd be literally holding pieces right above the crane cab and I don't want to scratch it. <laughs> That'll work. I guess that's a basswood tree. I've never seen one in my life. It looks pretty cool. It's crazy, like, the diversity of species that they have out here. So many different types of trees. It's really wild. And I love their method of moving the plywood with the Avant. This is really, I really welcome the machine takeover of the world, man. This is really quite nice. Hey, Rion, what's, what's the exact make and model of this machine? Uh, it is a PK-110-2020 Kenworth. I don't really know what the fly jib is, though. Did they measure it differently, tonnage for yeah, so these this knuckle is, uh, This is a 110 metric ton, which is about half of what a normal 
measurement would be. So it's equivalent to like a 55 ton stick tool. Okay. It's a lot, lot of cameras. You, you. Oh man. Filming him. <laughs> How much does this truck weigh? 80,000 pounds. Wow. How long is it? 35 feet long. stick out 28 foot wide outrigger span wow that's a big footprint yep. super stable though and is it incremental are the outriggers incremental or do you have to set them out all the way you can put them anywhere you want and then your chart will calibrate automatically uh, depending on yep. where yep. so this is really cool but we're already you know you can see so the footprint of this truck this truck four feet wider when it's set up than a typical stick. So the stick frame we were using yesterday, I think had a foot span of 24 feet. And that's what the it was at East Side as well. So a little wider of a footprint on this, but the but usually with stick booms, you have to sort of choose like half span or full span. Some have mid span, but you basically have to choose and that can make it tricky to set up. The nice thing about this one, even though the footprint's really wide, you can set them incrementally and you can basically put the outrigger down anywhere you want and then your chart will lessen depending on the degree at which you are you know sucking each outrigger out so you can actually you actually have more options for sticking out the outriggers but if you want to go all the way out then it's a really wide footprint so you need a lot of room if you want to go all the way out but you could also just stick them out 24 feet if you wanted Does it need, so it, this doesn't need to be zero degrees level? No, and actually, when this thing is level, the ass end is down a little bit. That's the level? Oh, it's actually pretty close. Huh. And I'll get a little bit more level for the big tree, but for this little one. And do you keep the tires on the ground? Yeah, with this type of crane, you don't lift the tires off the ground. Okay. I think that's probably the biggest disadvantage of the knuckle boom Tremex style of crane. So with this crane, you have to keep the tires on the ground because the chassis of the truck acts as a stabilizer as well. Whereas a stick boom, you get the you, you get all the tires off the ground. And, it, and, and the nice thing about that, which means if you were able to lift the tires all the way off the ground, it means that the sky's the limit. You can raise it as high as you want. Wow, so, but the ground needs to be more level to set up this crane. And at East Side, you know, we are working in the Pacific Northwest. That's why the owner went with a stick boom instead of a knuckle boom. One of the reasons is because we have crazy hills all over the place and it made more sense to go at the stick boom for setting up on the hills. You know, this is actually pretty flat out here. What the heck am I looking at? Wow, literally like a transformer. Yeah, so a stick boom has your cable, your swing, your boom, and your rotate. So four things and then maybe a swing break, so maybe five things. This has like 13 functions. <laughs> Crazy. So I'm sure it's a lot easier to train someone on a stick boom than train yeah. someone to run this. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve. 
Dude, it looks so cool. It's literally like a transformer. So by using the bigger grapple, basically you don't have to switch to slings until a lot later on because this thing can reach around the wood and it's safer because it has a bigger, you know, has a bigger grip. See how small that one is. So this is for farther reach. Farther reach because it's lighter. It's probably only about 400 pounds difference, but I think every little bit helps. Right. Okay. So this, so this grapple's stronger. But it's heavier, so it lowers the capacity. He runs this crane from that, <laughs> I don't know, that keyboard that he's got dangling from his waist. So what's cool, what I'm seeing that's cool about that is he can run this crane from anywhere that he feels like in the yard. The downside is it's complicated to run so you know if you've got if you're sitting in the cab of a stick boom crane it's easier to run but you're stuck in that cab so more mobility but also more complicated and rion's gonna have to stand in the rain it's okay the next job will be sitting in the merlot <laughs> is this thing a maintenance nightmare like i'm looking at a lot of hoses and stuff so far, I haven't had any breakdowns and I've been running it for two years, so. Wow. It's pretty, pretty awesome machine. It's pretty cool, man. You can stand right here and you can really see the wire. Oh, yeah. You're not in a cab asking somebody to spot you or anything. Yep. Thing with this, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about that. What? We'll be at the base, so get your heart hat on. Okay. Little mini Porter Wrap, half inch 10X. Locking it off. Good idea. Okay, so see how the tines are pointing that way? You always want to cut on the tine side first on your V cuts. So cut on the tine side first and then cut here. Why? Because the grapple naturally wants to tilt this way. Okay. So if you always do your second cut on the back side of the grapple, you'll never pinch us off. That's like opposite of yeah. the stick boom. A lot of things are opposite. Okay.
so crazy. So I'm literally just gonna have to hang out in the tree and make cuts. Just get it on the ground and then let Felipe do the rest so you can get to the tree quicker. you have. So I should get geared up then? Yep. Alright. Seems all suckery. This tree would be so hard to do, to rig out. Dude, trees like this, it's like, no wonder you guys put so much thought into like all your redirects and work positioning stuff. This is way sideways. Yeah, our, our trees are straight up and down. This is like, really a wide tree for me. It's like climbing with a robot. Tree murdering robot. You serious? That So that's sufficiently strong to hold it right there? That wood? It's just, I just cut it. That's, that's it. Are we ready? I don't like these suckers, Rion. Your trees are pissing me off. All right, here we go. So cool. So, so now I just wait. <laughs> Says so now you look at Instagram until I come back. That's my specialty, dude. Dude, so another advantage to this is you. Yeah, Instagram. <laughs> More time for Instagram. No, so. You actually need a somewhat adept climber for a stick crane to sling everything up, but you could have just about any any climber to do this. <laughs> this takes very little skill on my part. What do you mean it's important to have the crane at the halfway point? Oh, because it's fewer pieces that you have to move. Because if you had to retract and all that, it would be a lot more moving. So. Will it be okay if I cut straight through? Cause this is awkward reaching behind me. Can I just cut straight through? Will it work? <laughs> oh man. That's, 
crazy. This really makes a lot of sense. So look at that, all those horizontal limbs, you see all the trees out here are all sprawly, just like this, you know? So this grapple, being able to grab stuff like that and not having to send a climber out to the limb to tie two swings, saves a lot of time. This wouldn't quite work as well where I live because all of most of our trees are tall conifers and it's a lot of smaller branches and they're really tall. Um, we don't have a lot of trees like this where I live, really big, sprawly. I and mean, we don't have any ash trees that are native unless somebody planted them. And also they do a lot of these dead ash trees they are getting gobbled up by the emerald ash borer. And so they're dangerous and they're brittle and this thing, Oh, it's freaking sweet, man. It's so cool. Yeah, and he's saying it's most efficient if you can keep the crane in the middle of the work zone. That way it's fewer movements. So right now it's perfect because the chipper is almost an equal distance as this tree. Dude, I love this thing. Your saw is in that, huh? There's a chainsaw in there. about this is the picks aren't going to be as balanced if you're not using slings so as the climber you got to be a little more cautious you got to be a little more dodgy with this because you've got one point of attachment right there and he tries his best to grab it in the middle so as to disperse the weight evenly but there's nothing you can do if you have two yeah right yeah so Rion knew that was going to flip because of that lateral because there's nothing you can do with one point of attachment. So we just know that. I might have to duck a little bit and that's fine as long as we're you know, cognizant of that. So the picks move a little more, but you don't have to sling them up. So it's really pretty great. You know, you also save a little time the fact that people don't have to undo the rigging even though your slings are really fast. Crazy being in the backyard and the crane operator is like, can see you. Oh, cool. 60% capacity. Am I taking this one next? This big horizontal one and the other leader? Dude, it'd be a pain in the butt slinging this with all, especially all the suckers and stuff, and then trying to get back to the trunk and everything. Crazy. Another big advantage of this, he's able to reach underneath certain sections of the tree. And, and he was showing me pictures of him going like under the power line and back over. And so you can remember how the disadvantage of the big stick crane is you can get all that headspace. Rian doesn't need it with this because he can articulate that thing like crazy. He can really sneak this into a lot of places. It's crazy how much control you have too, fishing out the limb from other branches. The fact that you can deliberately spin it. So what Rian said is if you like doing crane work regularly, there's more opportunity with this one versus the stick crane because, so you know how he just took this limb off? He snuck under here, took it out, spun it, and then went out. A stick crane, you wouldn't have been able to do that really. You'd be interfering with all this stuff. Basically, if this were a crane removal with a stick crane, I would have taken the top of this all off, but he's able to sneak this out. So he's saying he can trim a tree even. If they say, hey, there's this big leader going to my house I want, he can park his truck, he can take that leader off and be on his way. So he can use it for trimming and removal. So we're a stick crane. He technically can prune with it, but it's really not ideal for that sort of thing. But if you don't live in a place where you have sprawling trees like this, then that's not really the case. 
I think region plays. I mean, of course, like, I think the biggest factor is gonna be what kind of trees do you have where you live, determining which type of equipment you wanna get. And you know, with that, and if you're hanging it from the ball, it's kind of dangling there, right? You can't deliberately turn it one direction or the other. Whereas <laughs> he, he straight up just turned it 90 degrees and was on his, on his merry way over there. And now he's already on his way back. I'm all about this thing, Rion. What do I take next? The hammer pick, the big one. Okay, and where am I cutting it? No way. Are you serious? No way. Like I'm taking like this? No way. Are you ser you're serious? Holy crap, you're not even kidding. Dude, this is so exciting. <laughs> I, drove, I drove across the country for this moment. <laughs> Rumba, dude. We just broke Jake in with his first knuckle boom hammer pick. Here it is. <laughs> Seventy percent capacity. Should have gone bigger. Should have gone bigger. This wood is hard as a rock, man. Big one. <laughs> the thing that really surprises me is how stable these pieces are when I cut them. I'm sure that's mostly your operation and where you're grabbing it. But it's pretty incredible. You know what I don't like? I don't like cutting this wood that much. <laughs> so hard like definitely something nice about the trees where I live. <laughs> They're way easier to cut. You know that piece fell perfectly. <laughs> oh, now I need my rain jacket. Oh my gosh. I don't know where I am. <laughs> you gotta go find it. Aren't you just wearing it? No, this will fuck up water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. 
All right. Easy. Easy. So that's what you meant by level, so it doesn't slide off like that, okay. So see, the whole point of the V-cut, right, is so that you've got this nice shelf that the piece can sit on. So you can kind of safely get out of the way and you don't punch your bar. If you look at mine, it's sloped down at an angle like this, and it defeats the purpose, because you saw that last piece, it just slid off right towards me because I had cut it at an angle like this. So. How did I even do that? Yeah, I don't know exactly how I did that, but... Okay, so he's saying, you know, this first one went a lot better because the I cut an equal amount of wood off the sides. They line up nicely, it just sits right in there. This one, I cut a whole bunch off this side and then tried to bypass it with this one, breaking the wood, sliding it off. So next time I'll try to keep it more level and I'll try to cut an equal amount of wood off the side so it doesn't slide around as much. Actually got a really looks like a really good spot to mount it. Is that beep, is the crane beeping at a pleasure or pain? <laughs> so far, smoothest, farthest piece away from the crane today, also the biggest. The crane's singing a little tune. Cause we're at 95% jib. <laughs> Should've gone bigger. Should have gone bigger, we got 5% left. 95% <laughs> capacity, huh? Pretty good, man. Oh, it's cool, I didn't even have to hang out in this awkward position. I'm like, hanging out here. I don't have to sling it. So I can go back over here. Check this out, you ever do this for your uh, single line? Space tight right there, so I don't have to climb all the way up. I just want to impress you. having fun getting a little bit stretched out here on the last rush pick of this ash tree 
Jacob. And the one hat. Pretensioned to 77. Here we go. We'd be so much faster at cutting down trees if we actually cut down trees instead of videoing everything. How was that one, Rian? 85%. Yeah, I've got that's the same saw I have, except he has a half rack handle, mine's four wrap, other than that, right there. Is this your first time with a knuckle move? It is, yeah. How do you like it? Dude, it's awesome. I don't think it would work as well where I live, because our trees, trees are different. Well, and we don't have large limbs on our trees. It's like a lot of smaller limbs. Oh. No, it's, it's super cool. It's so efficient. It's really crazy. Can I get that 66 again? Yeah. Thank you. That was great. The saw's cutting really well. No, I just, I, I mean, I'm on my rope, so I'm kind of weightless, you know? Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it was great. Thanks. No, I kind of figured it would come towards me, but it's bad when you're like strapped into something and something hits you, you know? But if you're just dangling. Yeah, as long as you're just aware, you know, that I think it's, I thought it was good. That was so smooth. Dude, I love this machine.
It's so crazy, just like kind of camping out and just cutting whenever you get back to me. Yeah. So now do you have to change attachments? So you're getting off the roof now? Where'd you get that crane tie-in thing? Free stuff. And it's made specifically for this? It's for the cable crane. Right. Works well. Alright. Get back on. Alright. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's <laughs> crazy. Are you guys done yet? Can we finish this job? Traveled across, halfway across the world to give you a hard time. <laughs> Watch my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I like that. I like it. And they're big ass slings. <laughs> I think huh? we're good. all the way through but when I get to about the halfway point I'll put this one in the back side to keep the soft and thin. It's nice to have three wedges but you can do it with two. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop this one in right here. Both of these wedges are past the halfway point to 
to where I'm going to finish my cut. So now when I finish my cut, the whole piece should tilt back and my saw won't get pinched. That's really clever. But probably key to take the, make sure no wedges in that side so it can close. Yep. Yeah, just like you said it would. So right when he got to the end there, it popped open on this side, it shut closed on this side. And now it's just resting there, it's all the way through. He's just gotta lift it up. We're at 88%. 90. <clears throat> What I'm going to do is retract the jib because that will gain percentage right away. And it'll actually go up a little bit too. That piece is just dragging. I'm going to go mob and I'm going to attack the main beam right now to give myself a little bit more capacity. You get more capacity from retracting than you do booming up. Um, yes. Man, it's a flat, low stump. It was a good cut. Thank you. It sure is a good feeling lifting this piece over the house when you know that each one of those slings is rated for an 11,000 pound working load limit or a 90,000 90, pound breaking strength. How do you feel like, let's say you weren't working on the job site, you're just an owner who's doing bids and stuff. Would you feel comfortable like delegating this machinery to one of your guys? Or would you be more comfortable delegating, you know, putting somebody in charge of a stick crane? Hmm. Like, let's say you had to buy a crane, but you weren't going to operate it. I think these are more it. fragile. And there's yeah. more parts to break, for sure. So if you weren't the operator, would you be a little more inclined to maybe go with Probably. a stick crane? Can you tow it at ways? Nope. Because it just gives you the capacity. I'm going to say 4,500 pounds, though. Maybe okay. 5,000. Take a picture by the beach? Yeah. Alright, holding it back up. This thing probably really shines in storm work, huh? Oh, yeah. To not have to sling anything. Right. It's so versatile. And you can reach underneath other trees. So, places where you could not get another, you know, a stick wind crane. Right, you can snake it through stuff. Sense that I jumped and it didn't like that. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Truck come with that or you put that in? It came with that. Really? They literally thought of everything.
nice job, Felipe. It's crazy how fast you, Thank you. munched through all that brush. You too, you're pretty good. Oh, thanks, man. Now I nice feel like job, we need buddy. to do like a manual removal. But <laughs> <laughs> for reminiscing. <laughs> when was the last time you did a manual removal? It's been a couple months. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. All right, well, that's it for this one. We're gonna go to lunch and we've got a couple more jobs to do. We gotta go get the Merlot and do, I think a couple Merlot jobs, but that's gonna be it for this video. It's just easier for me to edit that way if I just do it in another part. So there'll be one more Rion Rounds video before I'm on my way to my next destination. So hopefully you like that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Really interesting for me to work with the knuckle boom for the first time or the tree mech, you know. Um, super versatile tool it'll be cool to try the merlot one more type of crane see how it compares against the two and then maybe you know me and rihanna i'll give our final thoughts on on which crane is best for which situation you know but they're all good for various situations but yeah if you like that you know like and subscribe if uh if my videos have been have any help to you or you enjoy this or you want to support my work you know please consider going to my patreon you can sign up for it and you can like donate it's like a monthly thing and you can if you're interested you can donate like a dollar a month like as little as you want you know and that just helps me to maintain this you know trying to do this traveling show deal you know so i appreciate your time thanks for watching and be sure to come and uh, check out the next one this next machine i think is going to really blow your mind i think there are only a handful of them even in the country it's like a brand new machine and rion says it's he says it's pretty cool so come and check it out next episode all right see you guys